Hey everybody, welcome, 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 welcome. You are on the right track. You are on the right place. My name is Bruno Coelho and welcome to the Millennials Helping Millennials on How to Sell Show. This is the episode number two and I'm incredibly blessed today because you guys are going to meet an amazing millennial. He's doing incredible things. His name is Jordan Stupar. He's just 28 years old. He's part of Grant Cardone's sales team. Last year, he broke major sales records and became the number one, first, the first or last maybe, became number one in the entire sales team by generating $2 million in revenue. So guys, if you want to learn how you can turn your potential into money, you are definitely in the right place because Jordan was kind enough to invest some of his personal time to be, be here with us today. So everybody, help me welcome, all right, our amazing guest, Mr. Jordan Stupar. Jordan, Thanks. how are you, my friend? I'm doing unbelievable, man. How you doing? I'm doing great. Dude, this is an amazing time for us because, you know, people are blaming the economy, saying the economy sucks, this and that. But look at this amazing technology. I'm in Portugal. You are in the United States. You're doing great things. And now we created this opportunity using this technology for people to get what we are saying, get some of your experience, get some of your strategies and insights that you're about to drop and take with them, apply it and get results. And this is only possible because you are living in a free country. The economy allows you to create your own business, to sell stuff and to help people. Would you agree that this is exciting or is it just me? It's an unbelievable time to be alive as a, as a sales professional, really. Um, you know, one of the statistics right off the bat that I'll tell you is that, um, that people that use social media, Blab, Periscope, Twitter, Facebook, so on and so forth, those professionals are going to have a 70% chance of doing more business and having more sales than people that don't. So really, it's an incredible time to be alive as a salesperson. It's an incredible time to start getting, uh, getting everything rolling. There you go. There you go. Um, so guys, this, this is an amazing opportunity. And talking about opportunities, this reminds me of one thing, guys, please, there's no need to hold this incredible opportunity just for ourselves. So be awesome and share this with all your friends, colleagues, mom, Master. dad, right? Let's do it, man. Share this because Jordan, as you're going to see, he's about to, to, to help you tremendously. So while you guys are sharing Jordan, first question, you ready? I'm ready. Let's roll. So who are you? Introduce yourself to the world. <laughs> well, I'm Jordan Stupar. I'm uh, from Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, here in the United States. And um, I'm 28 years old. I'm a millennial. And uh, I've been in sales now for close to nine years. I have a door-to-door -door background. I've sold vacuum cleaners. I've sold knives. I've sold... Um, uh, all sorts of different things, alarm systems. Yeah. I've bought cars over the phone. Um, I've done a lot of things and really um, I've chased opportunity. And one of the mm -hmm. things that I, I, I like to talk about when it comes to millennials is, hey, you got to leave mom and dad's house. You got to go out. You got to find where your opportunities are. So I've lived in about six different states, six different cities here in the last uh, six or seven years, just looking for opportunity, looking for a runway that I can take off on. And um, I finally found it. Um, obviously we're breaking out of some type of obscurity. I'm talking to some guy from Portugal right now, Bruno. Mysterious, and so, mysterious um, stranger. Yeah. And so, uh, I work for a guy named Grant Cardone. If you guys are jumping on. Here and you're like, man, who's this one guy? I'm really excited to uh, to be interviewed by you here, Bruno. Answer some questions and and hopefully provide some people with some real solutions that they can use in today's marketplace. Oh, oh no! Did he go away again? Where are you, Bruno? Come on, Bruno. Get back on here. I'm hanging in there, Bruno. All right, so hey, take this opportunity, man. Who's got some questions? Put it down in the comments below. I'll answer some questions here. 
How long have I worked for Grant? I've been working for Grant for two years and uh, about three months. Two years and three months for Grant there in Miami. Define millennial. Great question. So obviously there's a lot of different definitions out there hanging around. The one that I like to use is just an age. Um, I would say anywhere between 18 and 35 um, would, would define a millennial. Somebody on the younger side, young adults, 18 to 35 years old. What are the questions you guys got as, as Bruno? All right, there's Bruno. He's back. Yes. Sorry, guys. Something strange is going on. <laughs> anyway, anyway, just keep on going. Yeah, we just keep going. Uh, exactly. And you did well. You were ask, uh, answering some questions from the people. Yeah. The good people who are here. See, all 16 of you. Thank you so much. Uh, all right. So you were introducing yourself. You work with Grant Cardone. You were saying you were... Have you finished the story about you working for Grant? Yeah, yeah, I came down there. Okay. Yeah, good, 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 good. Yeah. So what was the achievement that you're most proud of last year, Jordan? Uh, last year, what are you most proud of? My, my best achievement was finishing uh, as the number one producer um, in the office. I had the most sales, the most revenue. Um, I would say that was an achievement I didn't even really think was possible. Looking at the talent, looking at the other folks that I work with. I mean, I work with some of the most talented some of the most skilled sales professionals literally on the planet. And, um, you know, looking back this time last year in January, I was like, <laughs> I, I wouldn't have put any money on myself um, producing the way that I did. So I, I'm, I'm personally really proud about that accomplishment. How interesting that you said that you would not put your money in yourself when comparing to others. Because sometimes when people talk about goals, they say, hey, if you don't believe in yourself, it's not going to work. But in your case, it did. Why do you think that it did in such a magnificent high level? Because I learned and duplicated from the people that I would put my money on. For instance, Jared. Oh, that's great, man. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> so look, great. I knew walking into that office that I wasn't, you know, I wasn't exactly the top performer. I knew that last January. Last January, I had a mm. horrible month. I started off the year very poorly. But I knew that there was people that I could learn from, people that I would put my money on if there was going to be a bet on who would be the top guy. And all who are I, they? Who are they? Um, you got Heath Powell, the Dominator. You've got Jared Glant. He's uh, our VP of Sales. Uh, you're looking yeah. at Steve Spray. Um, you're looking at Dave Robards. Really, in, yeah. Go ahead. Steve Spray is going to be here. Oh, nice. Yeah, love that. Looking forward to also to talk with him. Uh, but yeah, go ahead, John. You were learning with all of them. Incredible guy, one of my best friends. And look, I'd put my money on that guy last January that he would finish the year as the top guy. I'd put my money on Jared doing it or Dave or Heath, all those guys. I didn't look at myself as a top performer, but that's fine because what I did is I duplicated what those guys are doing because what they were doing is working. Mm. What Jared's done, what Grant has done with the other people in my office that are having success and making money. I know that if I duplicate their actions, if I learn the words that they're saying, if I learn their level of communication, I know that I can then bank on myself to be the top guy. And so throughout the year, you know, I wouldn't say that, you know, I'm better than anybody in my office in any way, shape or form. I have my strengths for sure. Yeah. But at the exact same time, um, what I did is I just duplicated those guys. I learned from them and, um, you know, I, I took advantage of some opportunities that converted and uh, it, it worked out in my favor. That's awesome. So that's a very interesting and positive message to, to throw out there, which is, hey, even if you think that you're not the best sales person in the world, or if you're not the best this or that, hey man, just do it anyway. Just do it like Jordan, learn from the best. If you're learning from the best and if you're surrounded by the best, it's hard totally. to Totally. So agree? one of the biggest life hacks that you can ever accomplish in your life, one of the best accomplishments I ever accomplished was getting around the right people. Because look, if you look, if you're if you're yeah. if you have zero dollars and you and you have two groups of people that you zero. can hang out with, you got a group of people that are making fifty grand a year, that are smoking weed, that mm -hmm. are doing drugs, that are messing around, <laughs> or you pick a group of friends that are all multimillionaires, all company owners all have nice cars, houses, great familial relationships, and you decide to hang out with one, which one are you going to pick? 
you're going to pick the success. Yeah. yeah <laughs> That's you're gonna pick the Let success. me think about it. Look, most people in their job opportunity or in their career, they hang out with the other crew. They're hanging out with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest success hacks ever for me is getting around the right people, people that will push you. Because I'll have a record setting month and I'll make a huge paycheck. And at the same time, I got my guy, Steve, reminding me, dude, that's no money. You didn't really make any money. You didn't make any real money, dude. What are you really going to do with that? <laughs> or I have Dave or I have Heath or I have Jared or I have mm -hmm. Grant telling me that, look, it's not enough. You need to keep on pushing, but they're positive about it. So getting around the right people, surrounding yourself with like-minded people that want success, but not even want it. They treat it as an obligation, as a duty and a responsibility. That's one of mm -hmm. the biggest success hacks, hacks you can have in life is getting around the right people. So you hear that, guys? You need to surround yourself with, with, with not only positive people because – you know, in today's day and age, I hear a lot about, hey, we, we need to surround ourselves with happiness and positivity. And, that, and that's all good. But, hey, we need to get real. If, if you want to reach some massive goals, you need to surround yourself with people totally. who are on the same journey as you. And you are going and you're totally uh, pushing yourselves um, forward. But you also want to surround yourself with people who are at the stage to or to at the level totally. that you are. What I ultimately right? want to do is I don't want to be around people that are even having as much success as me. If I make a million dollars in a year, yeah. I don't want to be around a bunch of people that only made a million dollars. I want to be around hitters that are making 20 or 50 or a mm -hmm. billion dollars a year because that makes my million look really small, right? I didn't create a problem for myself yet. What I want to do in yeah. my life is I want to create problems. I want to have the right people around me so that they can tell me, look, dude, you're doing it right, but you're not doing it enough. You need to get more frequent. You need to get more consistent. Yeah. You need to build more muscles so that you can get pushed. Yeah. And I love I love playing cards. Do you do you like, like playing poker, cards? Yeah. I love playing poker, for instance. Do you like poker? Yeah, uh, I feel like when you when 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 you block yourself from meeting new people, it's like playing totally. poker with the same cards over and over again. And when you're learning from new people, it's like getting new cards. Oh my god! Now I can great create analogy. some new combinations here. Now I can go to to where I'm not great uh, analogy. Here. Uh, yeah, great analogy. So yeah. look, when you need help, thank you. You need assistance, whether it's financially or emotionally or whatever dude the type of people that you're around and connected to are going to be able to i mean that's i mean that's your limitation right there can they dig me out can they help me if i decided to create a business what type of advice can i get are they going to tell me don't do it you're too broke mm. it'll never happen be careful or do you want to be yeah or do you want to be around people slow down like, dude do it blow it up go huge i'll invest in you let's roll which type of crew do you want to be around? I invest in you. I, I think that's a key word. And uh, it's like coming up uh, again to that point about believing in yourself. Some people will say, uh, again, in the motivational world, hey, you need to believe in yourself, believe in yourself, believe in yourself. Dude, if, you're if you really believe in yourself, why yeah. don't you invest and most in yourself? People don't. How important... How important is that? Is that's is a that, huge that, point. That's right crucial. Now. Look, last year I spent probably eight grand on myself: courses, books, seminars, classes. More money than I've ever spent on myself ever. But it also increased my income as I went along, and I was noticing that. I was like, "Oh my god, dude! For every dollar I put in, I make fifty back." So, like, I don't have a problem. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a problem in no investing money like you. You you just spent a thousand dollars on Cardone University. I don't know how long ago it was, Easy, but I can guarantee you that you'll make $10,000 uh, off that deal this year. At least $10,000. You'll make it back. Easy yeah. times 10. I can promise you that. Question from the audience. What kind of books and courses, books and courses do you I recommend, recommend, Jordan? Great question. So look, if you're reading a book, man, I don't read books about like the sex novels or like mysteries or like that stuff, like, I, I don't want to put it in my brain because it's never going to help me make money. It'll never help me create a conversation. It won't do anything for me. So what I would recommend as far as books is like, all right, so my boss, obviously, I'm pretty biased, okay? I would pick up a Grant Cardone book. He's got four <laughs> New York Times bestselling books on sales, on business, on life. I'd pick those up. Other books that I love is Oren Claff, Pitch Anything. Unbelievable book, changed my life, really. I mean, that $38 book probably made me 38000 last year. 
um, another book, courses, anything on self-improvement, anything that you can learn about a human condition will help you. If I know how to talk to lawyers or doctors, or if I know how to communicate on some type of um, educational level with a, with a teacher or a professor or a, a race car driver, if I can have smart, intelligent conversations with people, I'm going to get more out of life, whether I'm asking for their business or I'm specifically just looking for a friend. So anything that helps you understand another person's condition, I mean, that's, that's a moneymaker right there. Exactly. And, that, and that, coming back to the card uh, analogy, every time you read a book, you get new cards to play. Every time you talk to people like Jordan, successful people, you get new cards to play. But the interesting thing that you guys don't know, because uh, me and Jordan, we were talking before the show was on, and we were talking about when we learn things, when we grow, when we get more experience, and we go back and, and read or watch the same materials that get, got us there, we actually extract new information, new strategies, new outcomes, new ideas, new insights that we can, again, apply. So uh, uh, unlike the card analogy where you have the cards and that's it, there's a shortage. And when you play a card, it's gone. Every time that you invest in yourself, this will be always with me, right? So everything that, that I'm putting my, into myself is going to be with me forever. So dudes, listen to Jordan, invest in yourself. You know, if, you, if you're not investing in yourself, someone has to start this chain of agreement that it makes sense to invest in you. So start by exactly. investing if you in yourself. If you invest in yourself, no one will invest in you. Boom. So that might be the reason why some people are having some troubles with money because they're blocking the money flow because yeah. they should be the ones starting Anytime it. Anytime that I have a yeah. bad month, a bad week, maybe even a bad day, as far as income or production is concerned, I figure out where I can spend money on myself. Maybe there's a seminar in town. Mm. Maybe I got to get on a plane and go see a client. I just need to spend a couple hundred bucks, just get out of where I'm at. And I need to go get with a client. Maybe it, I just figure out a way where I can go spend money on myself. And then ultimately, yeah, immediately yeah. money comes back to me. Contracts come back in. People start calling me back. It's the weirdest thing. I promise you it's a freak thing. It's, a, it's like this, this rubber band effect that Grant talked about is whatever you put out in your universe, boom, comes right back over to you. So look, if you're thinking about investing in yourself, I've done this a million times. You think now is not a good time. I'm going to think about it. I got to talk to, uh, you know, my wife, or I got to talk to my parents before I do this thing. Whatever you put out there is going to come right back into you. So look, if I'm looking to make, say, a $5,000 investment in myself, it's a class, a seminar, whatever, I'm looking at five grand to spend on myself, and I'm saying that I need to think about it, I'm going to start calling clients now, and those clients are going to tell me what. They're going to say, I need to think about it. When I say, oh, I got to talk to my girl or my parents, I got to talk to my mama, I'm going to call somebody up, and they're going to be like, yeah, I'd love to do the deal, man, but I got to talk to my mom." Right. You will and agree. so really, at the end of the day, once you put that five grand out there, you spend it, you do it, you take action, you immediately put action out in your own world. So you start talking to people and they're like, let's, let's go, let's do it. I'll sign it. I'm sending it back. Let's do it. Or no, man, I don't need to talk to them. I'm the freaking decision maker. I'm going to make this happen. Let's freaking roll. So stop blocking yourself. Start investing in yourself. Spend money on something. If you got five bucks, spend four of it on yourself and then spend the rest on a cheeseburger. Do something, make a decision ah. because really that's all it is. It's harder to make a decision than it is to spend the money. I guarantee you. That's so interesting. The point that you were saying about when you say, hi, I, had, I need to think about it. And then you're trying to convince someone to do something and they will say, I need to think about it. And they will say, oh my God. Yeah, I totally agree. And then you start I need to think about it myself. Yeah. So, so that, that means that you are selling yourself on the point that you need to yeah. think about. So look. If I'm telling myself so that I, get, I need to think yeah. about doing something before I do it, investing in myself, making a good decision, and then somebody tells me I need to think about it, I'm going to rationalize with that person be like, you know what? You're probably right. You should think about it. I'll, I'll call you later. Because I already mm -hmm. justified it on my own decision. Why would I push somebody or why would I even be able to push somebody to make a good decision? At the end of the day, and here's a, drop, here's a bomb drop warning alert. There should be like a little siren or something. Hello. The only reason Woo. why salespeople have a job 
are because people are bad at making good decisions. The only reason I have a job The only reason that making good decisions. So as a salesperson, my job is to remain ethical. My job is to make sure that that person that's in front of me talking to me gets the product that they need and that they deserve and that solves a problem for them. That's why I'm a salesperson. That's incredible, Jordan. Thank you so much for sharing that. And by the way, by the way, I'm just, I'm just thinking, do you want to share why you're here in the first place? Yeah, I'd love to. You why are you here? <laughs> the reason why I'm even doing this, I'm doing this in Washington, D.C., in our nation's capital over here. It's a beautiful day, sunny, very nice. Anyway, I'm doing this. I'm here because I'm a millennial. I'm 28 years old. I spent 26 years of my life broke. I've traveled the country. I've been in and out of jobs. I've been fired. I've been hired. I've been fired and then rehired. I've been broke. And I'm mm -hmm. starting to finally get a little bit of taste of success, just a little bit. And I wanted to get on here because, look, I see most millennials. I see them living in mom's house. I see them living paycheck to paycheck. Like, you know, 76% of Americans out here live paycheck to paycheck. That's three-fourths of people. You walk by four people in America, three of them are living mouth to hand to mouth. Yeah. And that's mostly millennials. And look, so look, we're the most educated people that this planet has ever seen. We've done more schooling, taken more classes, written more papers, and – freaking gotten more standardized testing than any generation ever yet we got a failing economy we got a bunch of issues you know in politics i'm sure you got the same deal going on in portugal yeah yeah look there's a lot of issues and so really millennials were like dude where where can i go to make money where can i go to succeed who are the people i need to surround myself with or do i just actually succumb to an average lifestyle and so what's important to me is I pushed, I persisted, and I insisted on finding a runway, a place where I can become successful. And my job and my responsibility at this point is to help other people, give them the tools, the solutions, and answers that they need so that they can duplicate those same actions. So that, look, when you're 22, you're like, man, dude, I'm tired of bussing tables, or I'm tired of serving food, or I'm tired of working at the movie theater. I have dreams. I have goals. I have aspirations. My job is to get you the information that, look, you can do it because the news isn't going to tell you you can do it. The news is going to tell you to save your money and live in mom and dad's house. The news is going to tell you to go back to college when really, mm. really, you want to get in all that debt? You really want to get in all that debt? If you're not becoming a doctor or a lawyer, don't go to college. Just drop out. You know what? You know what I don't understand, Jordan? And maybe, maybe you can help me. For instance, do you have people complaining about, uh, you know, they, they, they bought into some of the grants courses and they say, hey, I tried this. I tried a million things and it didn't work. So I, I want my money One, back. Do you we don't have, we do not have any money back uh, right. policies. If you, if, if, if you purchase our program Are and you it don't? fails you, it's because you didn't do it. Yeah. It's just like buying a gym membership. I think that everybody uh -huh. around the world, if you're here from – you know, Portugal, you're here from Switzerland, France, Russia, it don't matter. If you're overweight mm -hmm. and you're looking to lose weight, if you go to the gym every day and you put in enough work consistently and long enough, are you going to lose weight? Yeah, you're going to lose weight. If you want to be a sales professional, you want to earn yeah. more money, Bruno, you did the right thing. You purchased the university. The only reason it wouldn't work for you is because you wouldn't watch it or you wouldn't pay attention or you weren't able to actually train on it. Mm hmm agree i totally agree but yeah. do you have complaints yeah. do you, still do people complain yeah but but you know what 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 drives me nuts is people spend more even maybe no not maybe more money in college degrees they get the freaking degree and then they they will go to with a degree with their hands and and start sending resumes like crazy saying hey i have this degree and then nobody hires them and they will, and, they, and, there, and there's nothing in their head saying, oh my God, I just spent $5,000 in this degree and this freaking degree is not helping me get money. They don't complain about it. Actually, they're kind of like comfortable because their parents are supporting their lifestyle and they have all things. And then they, when they invest in the course, they say, hey, 
This is a $97 thing. This, this didn't work. Oh my God, they're complaining, but they're not focusing on what's driving the real results, which is in your opinion. What, what, yeah, what's no, driving that's, the real I mean, results? That's, that's a huge, huge problem, man. Look, you go to university, you, you do communications major or theater or anything. Literally, if you're not a doctor or you're a lawyer, get out of college. It is a freaking trap. It's going to ruin your freaking your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, and your 50s because you're going to be so deep in debt. Look, so here's the deal. You go to college, you get your degree, you figure out, okay, I got this done. I'm going to go be able to get this big, awesome job, and life is going to be swell. Life's not going to be swell because, look, your college mm -hmm. or your university didn't teach you how to pick up the phone and communicate with somebody. They didn't teach you how to handle objections. They didn't teach you to walk into your boss's office and say, this is why I need a raise. Oh, well, you know, it's just not time yet. I understand that, sir. But if there was going to be a good time to get a raise, I feel like it would be right now. How do you feel? Being able to handle those types of situations, following up with a client, growing a business, handling, handling, handling and managing wealth. These things are not taught. In America, we don't know anything about the taxes or the IRS when we graduate college. Nothing. I didn't even know what a W-2 was mm -hmm. when, I, when I got out of college. Had no idea. And then all of a sudden, January 1st mm -hmm. comes around and the taxes, the IRS wants half my money. Why? So look, college and university, they're not going to teach you how to do any of that. But we can. True. True. Yeah. I have two degrees, by the way. I have a degree in software engineering. I have a degree in software engineering and a nice. master degree in management. Still broke. Still broke. Still broke. Why? Because I was not able to sell myself. I have a lot of potential, a lot of degrees. Yay. A lot of experience. That's awesome, man. Hey, you're broke, dude. Let, let, let's face it first. We need to first agree on not staying where we are at the level where we are before we can accept and agree to move right. somewhere else, right? So guys, if you're on the audience today, stop fooling yourselves. Stop reading and consuming the, let's be positive. Yeah, man, let's be positive, but let's get real all right. uh, at the same time. Because if, you, if, if your head is in the dream world, you're, you're not ready to deal with the real world, which is, man, you're not where you want to be. So let's do something about it. Crazy thing about sales, Jordan. When I made this breakthrough in my life personally, when was when I figured out that everybody's in sales. And the reason why I was not getting what I wanted and not attracting and, and accomplishing the goals that I have was because I was not able to sell. Um, so what I guess what I'm, what I'm going for is, would you agree that sales is the most, probably the most misunderstood profession and skill? Totally. I mean, really, at the end of the day, everybody's a salesperson. I mean, I, I love talking to, to people that are, say, maybe in, in retail. They get paid their 10 bucks an hour or something like that to sell clothes, and uh, they don't really get a commission. They're just kind of there to answer questions, make sure that I get the right size pants. And I'm like, hey, you're in mm -hmm. sales. And they're like, what? No, I'm not. I'm not a salesperson. And I'm like, you just proved my, my point right. You're trying to convince me and sell me on the fact that you're not a salesperson. So look, there parents, if there's parents on this deal, you're trying to get your kids to bed at night because you want to stay up. You want to have a drink. You want to watch the prices, right? You're not putting your kids to bed. You have to sell them on sleep. And they're going to mm -hmm. give you objections. I don't want to. I want to stay up with you, mommy and daddy. <laughs> That's an objection. You got to be able to handle that. And okay. so one of the biggest misunderstoods about sales is that, look, all right, we're a bunch of shady people. We're just trying to make a bunch of money. We're not trying to help anybody. Another misunderstood is that, look, I'm not a salesperson. I'm a little bit more of an order taker. Also, sales, oh, sales, you know, you can't get anywhere in sales. That's not, that's not going to do anything. I want to be a lawyer or a doctor. Look, if you're a lawyer, you're a salesperson. And you got to work both sides of the case. You got to sell somebody on representation. Then you got to sell somebody, sell the judge and the jury on somebody's innocence or their guilt. If you're a doctor, you got to sell yeah. people on why you need to fix their heart or fix their finger or whatever. So look, one of the biggest misunderstoods is that 
life is a sale. Every single thing that you have, mm. I have my iPhone here that I'm doing this deal on. I got my MacBook computer over here. I got my nice tie and shirt and jacket on. All these things, they're not mine. Somebody else bought them for me. They were a commission mm -hmm. for doing something. Your health. Let's say you have really mm -hmm. great health when you're 75. <clears throat> and this is all, by the way, Grant Cardone content from Seller Be Sold, his book. Look, if your health is a commission <laughs> of treating yourself right, treating mm -hmm. yourself well throughout life, your marriage, that's a commission, bro. If you have yeah. a good marriage, that's a commission from doing the right things, putting attention, buying gifts, having playtime. All of those things are a commission to having a good marriage. So look, that's one of the biggest under mis misunderstoods about sales is that, look, everything is a sale. Every single thing in your environment, I'm looking at a pool table, oven, kitchen, the, the chair I'm sitting on, all these were bought and sold by somebody. So guys, you cannot have a moment where you're not selling. Because every time that someone is trying to communicate an idea and you, you will have to agree or disagree on that idea you're selling, guys. So, uh, Jordan, coming back to the millennials, the millennials who are struggling with understanding how they can turn their potential into money. Uh, let me know if you agree with this, because what, what I, from my perspective, what I see most millennials do is they, they, they are following this, this plan. They're, they're, they're getting the degree. Once they have the degree, they're searching for jobs that match the degree. Then they, they start sending tons of resumes in hopes of getting the fourth step, which is to get to the interview. And then once they have the interview, hopefully they will say the right things to get the job. Now, obviously this plan is, is broken somewhere because you know there, there's millions of people who are unemployed and, they, and uh, like you were saying, we have the generation that has most degrees, more qualified generation ever. So instead of following this plan to, to get a degree, search for the job, send resumes like crazy, go into the interviews, what would you say that if you are if you were a hell, you were a millennial, but what do you consider to be the, the very first step that someone who, who wants to start turning their potential into money, what would be what would that first step be? Step one is show up. Show up, man. You got to show up. If you don't show up, you got nothing. You absolutely, first things first, you have to show up. And so that's, that's my first tip. If you're fresh out of college or, you know, maybe you're, you're four years out of college and you still have a degree and you're still looking for your dream job, look, the first thing you got to do is show up. Most people shoot over a resume. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed that I get a call back. That's most people. <laughs> Look, I'm not cons I, I wouldn't consider myself most people. What I want to do is I want, when I want something, I'm going to figure out a way to take it. So if I'm looking at a job in sales management or I'm looking for a job in SEO or web development, whatever it is, whatever your skill is, look, show up, go to the business, figure out who it is that's going to be making the decision on hiring you and sit around and wait. Get their attention somehow. Send them a package, send them an email, send them a cell phone selfie video. Do something to get that person's attention. Because look, your biggest problem is obscurity. If a company doesn't know about who you are, what you represent, how hard you can work, and the results that you can give them, they're never going to hire you. Best way to get someone's attention, Jordan. Oh, what man. I mean, you can get as creative as you want to. Um, best way to get somebody's attention. What is the first thing that got, got to your mind? I mean, the most effective way is, again, just show up at somebody's doorstep. You know, yeah. I... I uh, my parents, when, when they were, you know, just met the first time, my dad, he, you know, he saw my, my, my mom before they had met and he showed up on the doorstep, said his first four words were, will you marry me? And first four no. words? She said no. Straight for the clothes. <laughs> right. He went straight for the clothes. Yeah. She rejected him and he kept on persisting. So look, same deal applies when you're looking for a job. If you're looking for a job, you, you show up. You do the resume, you provide them with the information that they request, you play their game. Yeah. And when they turn you down or they say, we're, we're full or whatever, you persist. 
You call them every other couple of days. You send them a message. You can send them a chocolate covered boot. You can send them a boot with a note on it that says, just trying to get my foot in the door. Boom. You can get as creative as you want to. And how long should they follow up? For how long? Follow up until somebody buys or dies. Hey, man, but that's, that's just not reasonable, Jordan. You're not being reasonable. I don't need to be reasonable. I'll let everybody else be reasonable <laughs> while I go scoop up what everybody wants. Oh, man, that's awesome. Guys, forget being reasonable. If you guys go to my Twitter stream, by the way, follow me at I am Brun Quaid. Boom, straight for the close. <laughs> guys, you will see a lot of videos. I I've been pitching this show to a lot of people. But it's not just dropping a video and forget about it. You need to follow up, like Jordan says, and being unreasonable. Hey, am I being reasonable contacting 72 people in 24 hours? You know, uh, going into my stream, you'll see just all videos. Oh, my God, this guy is a freak. He's not being reasonable. Hey, man, forget being reasonable. Uh, great advice. How many cold calls do you make on average? Question from the audience. I do a minimum of 100 per day. Uh, some days I max myself out between two and 250. Wow, 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 wow. 10x levels, guys. If, if you want to know what 10x means, that example that Jordan just, just shared with you, it's kind of like a tip on what 10x really looks like in real life. So, Johnny, you, you, were, you were getting somewhere, man. You're, you're up to something. So, millennials need to first get someone's attention. Jordan just dropped some ways to get their attention. But now you have someone's attention. They have, okay, man, you have 15 seconds. What's up with you, man? What's up? Okay, when you've got attention, you've got to capitalize on it. Look, the Super Bowl. You guys ever watch the Super Bowl over in Portugal? Uh, we don't, but I know about it. Yeah, I know. It's okay, or, big. or let's talk about, you know, let's talk about the World Cup, the, the final game, uh -huh, the championship uh -huh. game in the World Cup. The whole world is watching on TV. Mm -hmm. Look, you've got people's attention. As soon as halftime's there, you know there's going to be TV commercials. Mm -hmm. now, TV commercial better be freaking good. Mm -hmm. It has to capture that and hold that attention. So, look, if I'm in front of an employer, he's like, all right, dude, I got, I got one minute. Yeah. You got to have your pitch down. You got to be prepared and you got to be trained on what your deal is. So look, I'm in the, uh, in an elevator with an executive and I'm like, Hey, what do you do? And he's like, Oh, I'm the CEO of, uh, you know, Citibank, big company. I have his attention. Mm -hmm. Hey man, great to meet you. My name is Jordan. I work for a guy named Grant Cardone. And we go into any organization at any time and we'll increase sales by 15% or more within 20 days. That's it. Big claim, confidence, prepared. When you're a millennial, you have to be prepared for those situations. When an employer calls you back and they want a phone interview or they invite you back into the office for an interview, you have to be trained, drilled, and prepared on exactly what your value add is. Why me? Why would you pay me more money than somebody that'll do my job for less? Why me? And figure out the why. Once you figure out the why, you'll figure out the what and the how really easily. Mm, guys, I, I hope that you're taking notes, by the way. And again, call for sharing this stream because Jordan is not holding anything back. He's, this, this gentleman is dropping some serious insights and strategies. This is not just talk, by the way. We're, he's blowing our minds and he's giving you strategies that you actually, after finishing this blab this session you guys can put this to work figure out how to get someone's attention forget being reasonable follow up until either of you die until you get what what do you need to get you need to get that 15 second moment where the guy goes hey tell me about you what why should i care about you and then you need to be prepared now jordan that pitch that you just that you just uh, delivered would you agree that that pitch because it, can you guys help everybody I can help everyone. Okay, but there's if 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 there is a, the perfect customer, what would that perfect customer look like for someone that is selling the the courses and the programs that you guys are selling? If I mean, there is the, this perfect the per customer. You mean the perfect prospect for me who I would like to work with? The, the, 
the customer that when he says yes to let's do this training, this customer will have the biggest results in the least amount of time. So if you could describe what that customer is, could you do Yeah, it? I mean, that type of customer. That, that, that type of customer is going to be a large company. They're going to be a large company. They're mm -hmm. going to have hundreds of salespeople. Um, they're not going to provide much type of training. I mean, not much at all. My job would be to go into that organization and sell my platform, Car Cardone University, to that company mm -hmm. in hopes that it's used for daily training, in which case I can guarantee that you will see results. I can guarantee that your company and your business will make more revenue. In, in historically, what industry does your training get 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 delivers the biggest results? Do you, do you have that information? Um, right now, primarily, um, well, Grant he he got his start training car dealerships in the automotive industry. Um, cool. We're currently now probably fifty fifty between car industry and other businesses. I would say um, I'm working with a very very large um, one of the largest retailers of uh, wireless cell phone technology. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, they, we increased their business by 35% within 30 days. Um, you know, there, there's, we work with financial lending institutions. We work with chiropractors. We work with dentists. We work with anybody that yeah. just wants more out of life. There you go. The reason why I was asking these questions is because you guys are in a, in the field, the field of sales that applies to every business. That's why you were saying that I can help everybody. But then when you, when we start uh, drilling down and diving deep, we can figure out the, where is the industry and what is the profile of the perfect customer that gets the biggest results in the shortest amount of time. And what I was getting at is that your pitch, the, the elevator pitch, you need, uh, in my opinion, uh, I think that it, what, what works best is when you know with perfect clarity, who can you help the most and what millennials do with the resume thing, they start shooting, you know, like a machine gun, drrr, spreading resumes across the world in the hopes that they land the people that actually understand what the hell they're saying in that piece of paper. So what advice would you give to someone to understand, Hey, I have a lot of potential, but who can I help the most? Who, what would be the, the approach that you will do? to help someone understand what, what is the, the industry, what is the thing that they should invest their time and energy on to get to the master level that they need to be in order to get the big bucks. Because average doesn't pay much, right? It doesn't pay much at all. So, so look, if, if I'm trying to figure out, okay, where's my passion? Where, where's the right job? Mm. Where's the right position for me um, out of college with, with this resume and this, you know, this degree that I have now? What I want to do is I want to figure out one, Where's the money at? And two, I want to figure out a place where I can solve more problems than other places. Like for instance, when I solve a problem for somebody, I get paid. When Bill Gates, you know, made that Microsoft software and helped millions of people operate a computer, he solved a big problem. He got paid a lot of money. So the more problems that you can solve, the more you're going to get paid. And if you're good at solving problems, the more you're going to enjoy your job as well. So look, um, a, 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 a dinner server at a restaurant. They only solve yeah. a couple of problems at a time. People, people are hungry, but they would rather not, you know, uh, cook their own food and, you know, do the Correct. dishes. So they go and they pay somebody else to do it, but you're not solving a really large problem here. You don't get paid mm -hmm. a lot of money. However, yeah. now you can jump into my job role. You can jump on the phone, cold call somebody, from a, a $5 billion a year business. And if I can mm -hmm. increase their sales or lower their, uh, you know, increase their bottom line by 1% or whatever that would be, I'm solving them. Would I rather solve um, how to increase gas mileage or would I rather try to solve the problem of, you know, world hunger? I want mm -hmm. the bigger problem because it's going to be more gratifying. It's going to be exactly. better for me. It's going to be better for the planet if I can actually solve that problem. And it's going to motivate me more and I'm going to enjoy my life and I'm going to enjoy my career more than I would if I was just trying to figure out how I can get my car to do a couple extra miles to the gallon. There you go. There you go. So 
the, the thing is, when, okay, now, now you deliver the pitch. Let's say that they say, hey, you know what? I'm interested in you. I'm interested in you. So what would the next step look like for a millennial who, okay, he, he got the chance to pitch himself to the CEO. He told him, hey, I can help you with this problem. I can help you with web development. I can help you with your sales. I can help you with whatever. And the guy said, yeah, that, that sounds good. So if that sounds good, what would that next step be? Good. So look, once you generate interest in yourself and somebody's like, yeah, no, we're, we're definitely, you know, we, we'd consider you or you, we feel like you might be a good fit. Then you want to go in for the close. Mm -hmm. Look, when can I start? How soon can I get started solving problems for you? How soon can I start generating revenue for you? How soon can I start building this program that we were just talking about? Yeah. And go in for the close because then you're going to, allow your, the people that you're trying to get a job with, you're going to allow them to give you the objection. Look, we need more time. We're not hiring until next month, whatever. And then you can, yeah. you can capitalize on those objections if you know how to sell. Hmm. But if the guy says, okay, let, 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 let's do kind of like a, a role um, play, a role play thing. And that I know that I know, Hey, by the way, guys, everyone that is on the audience, how many times do you guys role play on your office? I role play once a day. <laughs> see guys this is 10x commitment right there so uh what i would say is okay jordan but hey man I i'm not entirely convinced yet that you actually can deliver the big promises that you that you were saying with that elevator pitch that you just dropped i mean i'm interested but man don't, don't ask me to sign the contract right now i mean how can i know for sure that this can work for me for my organization oh that's a great question one thing I can tell you is that it won't work for your organization. Oh my God. What, what do you mean? Can I tell you why? Yeah, of course. Because you don't have my product yet, sir. Oh, this guy's good. Or, <laughs> Hey, um, how do we know that you're going to be a perfect fit for us? Mm. That's a great question, sir. I'm going to, I'm not going to be a perfect fit for you. Mm. Why? why not? Yeah. Because I don't work for you yet. <laughs> Because I have not started yet, sir. Look, I know that you're trying to make a great decision here on who to hire in your business. Yep. You run the place. Mm -hmm. Am I the type of person that you would want in your, in your space, in your work area? Yes, you yeah, are. Yeah. yeah. Am I the type of person, have I shown you enough proficiency, enough knowledge or enough information for you to understand that I would be good at selling the product or building mm. the product. Or doing not something. yet. Not yet. What would you do if they say, Hey, Hey man, you, you haven't shown me anything. You just dropped a good pitch. I'm interested, but you haven't shown me anything that could convince me that you could actually deliver. What of would you do next? I haven't shown you anything, sir. I knew that before you said it of course <laughs> I anything because I haven't started yet. Mm. My only question is when can I start showing you on being a perfect fit? How, how much time would that take? I can start right now. And how much time would it, because I have a meeting in 30 minutes. Would that be enough? That's more than enough time, sir. <laughs> Guys, are you taking notes? Because this guy is amazing. But hey, uh, Jordan, let, let, let's cut the role play right now. And by the way, Jordan, have we, this, this looks like a magic tricks setup. Have we agreed on anything that we are doing right now? Have we set this up? <laughs> huh? Have we set this up? Have we set this up beforehand? No, the... no, no. This is just, we're just flowing. So this is what Jordan does. He, he, this is just not a script that we agreed on. This is his life, man. So um, what I want to engage the audience right now with this, with this question that if they, Jordan, if they are thinking our 12 amazing guests that we have here, if they're thinking, oh my God, the things that Jordan are saying, I don't have the confidence to say like that. Would those, uh, I mean, what, what is your advice to them? Because maybe they're saying, oh my God, this guy's incredible, but I'm just not Jordan. Yeah, no, you, you, you definitely aren't me yet, you know, and I wasn't even me two years ago. This is something that I had to build. So look, confidence doesn't exist on its own. You can't just be confident. Mm -hmm. Confident is literally like the definition of confident, meaning there are no other possibilities. It goes like this. So when I'm confident, Confidence comes from certainty. When I'm certain, there's a complete lack of any other possibilities or outcomes. So again, certainty now comes from training, drilling, and being prepared for a situation. 
comes so look, from when knowing. I'm confident, when I'm confident, look, you go back to being in like high school or college or going to the bar, you know, you're looking to get a girl's phone number. I get scared at it, man. I'm not feeling <laughs> confident. It's because I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. If I walk into a boardroom and I'm trying to sell a $1 billion uh, deal and I'm not feeling confident, it's because I don't know what I'm doing. When I'm confident, I know what I'm doing. I'm getting that girl's phone number. Yeah. Oh, I don't need a drink. I completely understand. Neither do I. Why don't you buy me one? Whatever that situation is, being prepared will help you be build confidence. So when you do have that opportunity in front of anybody at any given time to accomplish something, you have to be prepared for it. Interesting. Oh, man. That's awesome, Jordan. Thank you so much for sharing uh, those ideas because this is million dollar ideas and insights. Because here's uh, th this comes from a conversation that I had with a friend. So the friend was saying, hey, man, I'm, you, see, you see, Bruno, I'm just lazy, man. I'm just lazy. Because I wish I had the kind of motivation that you have. And I was like, man, you're not lazy. What do you mean I'm not lazy? Man, you're lazy because you don't know. You don't know what. You don't know what you're doing. You, know, you don't know how to get the goals that you once had. Because you, we always have dreams, man. When, when we're growing up, you know, it's either be a fireman or a, a pilot or whatever the dream is. We had the, the, the goal, the vision. But then because we, we tried and then we failed and then we quit trying. We quit trying and then we, we, we sold ourselves in this idea that we are lazy. But we're not. What we're, what right. we're doing is that we're not, we're, we don't know. Since we don't know, we're not winning. And since we're not winning, we start procrastinating because we don't want to push ourselves in this situation when we are losing. Of course, losing sucks. But if every time that I, that I pick up this phone, $1 million would drop into my bank account, would I be lazy? Shit, I, I'll be being all over this phone. So yeah. what, my, my challenge is how can I know how to generate $1 million with this phone? And that's why I started investing in Grant Cardone and you guys. <laughs> that's awesome. Man. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Hey, Jordan, what do you think? I, I know that we've been talking for the past one hour and a half, but do you still have time to answer some of the questions from our audience? I've got, I've got time. I've got about, I don't know, five or six more minutes. I've got another thing here at one o'clock my time. Of course, complete, I completely couple, understand. I got a couple questions. I'm with you. I'm 100% with you. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, listen, you have some time. The open seat is open for a reason. And that reason is feel free to join. Uh, take this opportunity. Ask Jordan whatever questions that you have. Jordan is a, is a rock star. And I want to thank you again, Jordan, for accepting to do this. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Man, I just hope that people can take this information, the insights and the strategies that you shared and just use it. Guys, don't just be here, okay? We're going to end this in like five to 10 minutes, but please don't just, don't let this blab just be another blab. Don't just let this session, this interview just be another interview. Take this opportunity to use what Jordan was saying and sharing and start moving forward on your journey. Start you today. Know, I'm actually, I've actually just got an email from my one o'clock looking to get set up. I will say okay. this, email me. If anybody ever has any questions, you can always email me. I respond to every email at jordan at grantcardone.com. It's jordan at grantcardone.com. Um, I'm sorry I got to jump off a little bit quicker than I planned. Don't be sorry, Jordan. I, I want to thank you again for taking the time, thank your you. personal time. And I'm looking forward to staying in touch with you because you're a rock star and I want to follow your success. I want to be surrounded by guys like you, man. Awesome, man. Well, thank I'm you so much. That I can be inspirational. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jordan. See you next time, buddy. Thank you. Yes, sir. Sure. Yeah. I own a property maintenance and contracting business. And uh, over the past three, four years, I've been listening, not only have the books, but also the audio. Uh, we can get out there and listen all day long. And the best part was just following up with clients, uh, mm. you know, existing clients, you know, offering things, take a picture of video, send it to their email. Hey, we noticed this, we can take care of this for you. And just uh, building a better relationship with more and more contact. Just it, as a, I think as a generation, we don't contact people enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was so easy to send a text, but we need to be calling into people, showing up like, like uh, he was saying, you know, show up to the business if you want it. Uh, but anyhow, Bruno, I, I'm going to come back on a little later. Uh, 
what you're doing is awesome, man. And Thank all the way from Portugal. If you're ever in DC, please do hit me up. I'd love to show you around, buddy. Love it, man. Hey, I will follow you. Keep our uh, awesome. connection going. Thank you. Awesome. I'm going to hop off, but someone else, please do get back on. Thanks, Bruno. Hey, my pleasure, man.